war that Netanyahu declared had begun in October was a war between the forces of Zionism and any opposition to that. But we're throwing all of our weight behind this. Our political influence, our military power, our resources, financial, military, political, diplomatic, etc., etc., while the whole rest of the world is moving against us. The forces of Zionism, the forces of globalism are being brought to bear and they're expanding this conflict and they will lose on that basis. Welcome back to Men and the City. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the Middle East. On October 7th of last year, after the Hamas terrorist attack, Benjamin Netanyahu declared, we are at war. What exactly did he mean by that? Who exactly is he at war with? And what are the implications for the world and specifically for us? the young men of the West. That's what we're gonna talk about today. I think one way to look at what followed after the end of the Second War in 1945 was not just the emergence of a new Bretton Woods system and a global financial capital positioned in New York City and in the United States. It wasn't just the emergence of America as the world's most dominant power and economy or culture, if you will. It wasn't just the destitute, bedraggled Europe that had to crawl out of this post-war environment or the reshuffling of the world based on the rise of the Soviet Union and the United States. And subsequently, the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990 certainly had changed the world. But fundamentally speaking, we are living in the post-World War II era, even now. But that era, basically created an era of victimization. Victimization as expressed between races, between genders, between nations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that victimization, I guess you could argue, started in earnest with the civil rights movement in the 60s. That then spread to the sexual revolution, and that gradually spread to homosexuals, spread to mass immigrants, refugees, transgenderism. The list just goes on and on and it's gained tremendous momentum to the extent that it's completely taken over our institutions, our society, our culture has become a culture of victimization, oppressed and oppressor, the Marxist dynamic. And at the core of that era of victimization, you might say the most egregious victim of all, of course, is the state of Israel. And so Israel, which was a direct product of the Second War, has recently embarked upon a war. A war that I think is going to end the era of victimization. It's going to destroy the post-World War II era completely. Since October of last year, two permutations have occurred. One is that the awareness of the Israeli state, its occupation, its terrorism, the asymmetry between the state of Israel with the Western governments in its pocket and the broader Islamic world, specifically in the Middle East, has surged around the world. It's ascendant in the East. It's topical in the West. It's explosive on Twitter and other alternative platforms. So there's a sense of awareness and awakening that's building, that's gaining momentum. So my question for you, is, you know, we often hear in response to these concerns that, well, Putin 
Khomeini, you know, they're war criminals, they're terrorists, uh, as if they're too inherently evil or immoral for us to negotiate with. But meanwhile, this administration has financed a genocide in Gaza for the last year, and every day you're up there denying okay. accountability for it. So, I mean, okay. what gives you the right to lecture other countries? On At the same time, organized resistance to the state of Israel, to the victim narrative that it cloaks itself within, has completely collapsed. Governments from Germany to France to the United Kingdom to the United States basically offer no resistance to this power. And of course, the United States being the most important because it is the United States, the purported victor of World War II and the greatest power in the world today, the standard bearer of moral principle, of the rules-based order, quote unquote, we are throwing all of our weight behind Israel. So we're gonna launch strikes. We're defending what was a, a humanitarian disaster in Gaza that has now spread to war between Israel and Iran and God knows what else. But we're throwing all of our weight behind this. Our political influence, our military power, our resources, financial, military, political, diplomatic, etc., etc. While the whole rest of the world is moving against us for the most part, excluding Western Europe and North America. The war that Netanyahu declared had begun in October was a war between the forces of Zionism and any opposition to that, anything. Be that the House of Islam, be that opposition in Western Europe or the United States, from America first, from Europeans that are increasingly skeptical. The forces of Zionism, the forces of globalism are being brought to bear and they're expanding this conflict and they will lose on that basis. They'll lose because the lies that have built up over the last 80 years, since the end of World War II, are beginning to break down across the board. The era of victimization, and at the center of that victimization, as I said, stands the state of Israel. That era is collapsing before our eyes. And young men who have had to weather the storm and suffer the consequences of these lies because of the victimization which paints them, paints us, as the enemy, our awakening is surging as well. We're just not going to take it anymore. That's not to say that we can stop this war from worsening or widening. We can't. It's baked in. It's going to happen. And more often than not, that's how Eras end. That's how grand cycles come to a conclusion, a grand finale. Oftentimes it's a war or it's a financial catastrophe or some combination thereof. Looks like we're going to get both. But either way, this era of victimization and its chief nation state are being overwhelmed by a surging momentum that stands against the lies, that rejects this culture this poison of victimization that has turned our society, our civilization, and um, our psyches upside down and now threatens global war. Are we going to go to global war? It's possible. I hope not. And part of the reason I hope not is because of the awareness that is gaining momentum in the Western world. But the collateral damage, no matter what happens, is going to be heavy. It's going to be severe. However, that will liberate us from the era of victimization so that we can finally decouple ourselves from all of the myths and the lies and the fabrications that have been institutionalized to poison us since the end of World War II, more or less. That, I think, is why people watch my channel. I think that's ultimately why what I'm saying registers on some level I think all of you are beginning to sense that, hey, something bigger is happening here, and we're all a part of it. World War III is not what we think it is. 
it's in many ways going to be the antithesis. It's going to be an unwinding of those lies and a restructuring of the world accordingly. And it's long overdue, long overdue. But we will get through this. The Middle East is going to change dramatically. The state of Israel as structured is going to change. What exactly that means, I don't know. But it's certainly not going to comport with Netanyahu's vision of Zionist hegemony in the Middle East. That's not going to happen. Or total capitulation of Western governments to his will. That's not the way this is going to go. A rebirth, a reordering, a neo-masculine awakening is underway. Because the era of victimization is going out with a bang. And that's what we're watching happening in the Middle East. Stay tuned for more, and we'll talk soon.